Hello happy crocheters. This is Lindsay from windingroadcrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute pencil pouch. To make this pencil pouch we are just going to need a few things. You can make this pouch in two different sizes. Um, I made one for holding some pencils and markers and you can adjust the size to fit those appropriately and then I also made a smaller pouch to hold flashcards because we have a lot of flashcards at my house. To make this pouch I am using worsted weight or a medium yarn. I am using Red Heart Super Saver in the colors gold, light pink, charcoal, buff, and a light gray which I don't have here but it is used for the fourth and the fifth row at the bottom of our pouch. We are also going to need a half inch button to be able to button our pouch close. This pouch doesn't actually have a specific buttonhole, but if you use a half inch button, you can push it between the stitches and it works out really well. For this project, I am using a four millimeter or size G crochet hook. You're also going to need scissors and a yarn needle and then this half inch button here. And I used it to match the top of our pencil, the kind of lead or graphite part of the pencil. And as I said, you do wanna make sure that it can push through two stitches to make sure that you can use it correctly. To get started, we are starting with the pink yarn and we are going to make a slip knot going to insert our hook and we are going to chain 20. Once we have 20 chains, we are going to double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So yarn over, find the third chain from the hook, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. That is how you double crochet. We are gonna work one double crochet in every chain across. For the first part of this pattern, we will be working in joined rounds, meaning we will join the end of our round with a slip stitch. When you are done with the last chain, we are actually not done with this round yet. We are going to take our piece and turn it so that we can work into the opposite side of our starting chain. To do this, we are going to work a second double crochet into that very last chain. Flip our project over. We're gonna find the second to last chain, just looking at the bottom of our double crochets. And we're gonna work a double crochet into the second to last chain. All right, and then find the third to last chain. And we're simply just going to double crochet into the opposite side of every chain across until we each reach the end of this side of the chain. So I'm just finding the next chain, working another double crochet. You will have a total of 36 double crochets in this round. Once we've worked 36 double crochets, so we came along one side, rotated our work and worked along the opposite side of the starting chain, then we are gonna join our round with a slip stitch. To do this, I'm actually going to fold my work in half so that it creates like a little pouch, find the first double crochet and work a slip stitch to join the two stitches. So now we have a joined round. From here we're going to chain one and then I like to pull up on my loop just a little bit. 
we are going to work a double crochet in every stitch across starting with the stitch that we slip stitched to. So simply work a double crochet in every stitch around until you reach the very last stitch. Once we've worked 36 double crochets and we've made it all the way back to the beginning of the round, we are going to simply slip stitch into the very first stitch again. You do want to make sure you skip that slip stitch and only work into the double crochets of the previous row. So just slip stitch to the very first stitch. Now we are going to simply repeat row two until we have a total of 13 rows for making the pouch that will hold flashcards or you can go up to 18 rows or more to hold things like pencils and markers. We are going to work row three in pink and then switch over to gray for the next two rows. To change colors, I just like to change during the slip stitch. So I'm going to yarn over with the gray when working the slip stitch and then just pull the yarn ends of both colors tight. And then I'll continue my rows or my rounds working with the gray. So we're going to work two rows using our light gray yarn and it's up to you. But what you can do is actually work over your yarn ends. I'll work over them for a good 12 stitches or so and then just clip the yarn ends because this isn't a project that I would expect to need to wash. I also think this project makes a really nice teacher's gift and it works up really fast. So if you have lots of teachers to make gifts for, it's a really good option. So you'll just continue repeating row two until you have a total of 13 to 18 rows, depending on what you plan to put in this pouch. So here I have two pouches. The smaller pouch is designed to fit flashcards and it has 13 rows before we start with the buff color, the kind of tan color at the top, or you can add additional rows. The pouch on the right has a total of 18 rows worked so far. And you can see that the 18 rows are actually a little bit tall for some of the pieces I hear, have here, I would actually remove maybe four of those rows if I'm planning to use it for mechanical pencils or maybe remove two of the rows if I'm using it for markers. It just depends on what you're planning to store in this pouch. But the one I have on the right does have a total of 18 rows. After working two rows of gray, I switched to gold and I worked um, my gold rows until I had either 13 or 18 rows. So it's just completely up to you. So I've worked as many rows as I wanted to for this pouch. And now I'm ready to change over to my tan color. This color is called buff and we are going to make the top point of the pencil, which is also our button flap. So I'm just changing over during the slip stitch. We are going to chain one. And then we're going to start this row by working a double crochet three together. So to do this, we are going to yarn over, insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull the loop through the stitch, four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, go to the third stitch, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. You have four loops on your hook. We are going to yarn over and kind of loosely pull through all four loops on our hook. We want this loose because we don't want to be 
gathering up or pulling on our on our bag. We just want this to make a nice point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work a double crochet into the next 13 stitches. Once you have those 13 stitches worked at this side of our flap, we're going to do a double crochet two together. So you're going to yarn over and insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook, yarn over, go into the next stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, and then you'll yarn over and pull through the last three loops on your hook. Now we are going to chain one and turn our work, pull up on your loop a little bit. We're going to begin this row with a double crochet, three together, just like we did the previous row. You can jump back in the video if you want to see how to do that one again. After our double crochet three together, again work it loose so that we're not gathering up this row. We're going to double crochet into the next 10 stitches. Basically what we're going to do for the next several rows is just work a double crochet three together at the beginning of the row and a double crochet two together at the end of the row, working as many double crochets as we need in between those two decreases. When you reach the last two stitches, we are going to double crochet two together. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over the next stitch, you're going to pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, then you will yarn over once more and pull through all three stitches on your hook or all three loops on your hook. And then we're ready to work the next row, continuing to decrease to create this nice little point. So you're going to repeat this row twice more, working a double crochet three together at the beginning of the row and a double crochet two together at the end of the row, working however many double crochets you need in between in order to get to the end of the row. When you reach the end of row 17, as we finish up that double crochet two together, the very last yarn over, we are going to change to the color we are using for the tip of our pencil. I'm using charcoal, but a fun idea would be to make the whole bottom section of the pencil one color, have a the buff color, and then work the very top in the same color as the bottom to make it look like a colored pencil just to change it up a little bit. So we're going to chain one and turn. And once again, we're going to double crochet three stitches together. Then we are going to work one double crochet. and then double crochet two stitches together. And just a reminder, we're not using a buttonhole here. We are just using a button that fits between our double crochet stitches. So once again, we're gonna chain one and turn. This is our last row. You should have three, top, the top of three stitches to work into and all we're going to do is work one double crochet three together. Just yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook and then yarn over once more and pull through the loop. Clip your yarn end and pull your yarn in all the way through the last loop. To fasten off. So now we only have two things left to do. We are going to weave in our yarn ends. 
So I'm just going to take each yarn end and weave it under a number of stitches. This isn't an item that should be washed a lot, so you don't have to do the normal back and forth three times, but it's completely up to you. But you just want to go ahead and weave in all your yarn ends, and then we are going to sew on our button, and we'll be done. So to find out where you'd like to place your button, just take your pencil flap, the point of your pencil and bring it down and decide where it lands. And then we're going to position our button to go in between that second to last row. So this is where I would position it if I was doing this for a pencil pouch. So it looks like the third row down is where I'm going to be placing it. But if you are going to fill this with something like flashcards, I would actually put it up one or two rows because you're going to need, um, it's going to give you a wider pouch to be able to get those flashcards in there. So that's completely up to you. So now I'm just going to use my yarn needle to sew the button in place. I'm using charcoal, both for the color of the button and the color of the yarn. And I'm just going to knot the yarn on the back side and clip it. That's fine with me. Some people would rather weave in the end. That's completely your choice. But once your button is in place and your yarn ends are woven in, your little pouch is ready to go. So here is the finished pencil pouch. Again, this one was sized to put some pencils in it. This one was sized for flashcards. And um, for this one, I did put the button right on that top row so that it would hold more items inside. So there's the flashcards for my daughter. I really hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and you like the little pencil pouch. If you like the videos, make sure to check out my other videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching.